Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisance as all glory to Shri Prabhupada. Welcome to devotees of morning Bhautam class. This morning we will be discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela chapter 2, verses 113 to 114. And the class is, uh, the, the chapter is entitled Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And we are very happy to have with us His Holiness Chandramali Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to you and all the devotees. Hare Krishna, Sri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai. Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Nirvata Vrinda Krishna Krishna Ke Kayayam Keham Anayanaya Keho Kaha Krishna Hoy Saksad Vamana Some say that Shri Krishna is directly Narayan. Others say that he is directly Vamana. Eho kahe Krishna Shiroda Sahi Avatara Asambhava Nahi Satya Vachana Sambhara. Some say that Krishna is the incarnation of Shirodaksha Vishnu. None of these statements is impossible. Each is as correct as the others. Srila Prabhupada's purport. And this is from Bhagav Lahu Bhagavatam Rita. That's by Rupa Goswami. 5383. According to the intimate relationships between Sri Krishna, the primeval Lord, and his devotees, the Puranas describe him by various names. Hmm. Sometimes he is called Narayan, sometimes Upendra, Ramana, the younger brother of Indra, king of heaven, and sometimes Shiradakshai Vishnu. Sometimes he is called the thousand headed Shesha Nag, and sometimes the Lord of Vaikuntha. Omagyantimidandasyaginajanasalakaya Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvase Sasuni Vari Pasyatya Dei Satarine Vansha Kalpa Taru Vrishya Vipa Sindhu Pe Pacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaha Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadahar Sri Vasudhi Gauravah Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. Hmm. And uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is established in the Srimad Bhagavatam as Sri Krishna. Ete Cham Sam Kalom Pum Sam Krishna is too. Bhagavan Swaya Indriyana Kavita Loke Uriyanti Vijay Vijay. This verse is actually what is known as the most important verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam because it, it clearly establishes Krishna as distinct from all the manifestations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as being the source of all of these other manifestations. Krishna, Satchit, Ananda, Vigraha, 
Nanadir Vadir Govinda Sarva Karna Karni. Both um, Sri Shupanishads, I'm sorry, Sri Brahma Samhita, Sri Mad Bhagavatam, and there are innumerable uh, other uh, statements in various parts of the Vedic literatures uh, that could clearly establish Krishna as this. He is the Adi Purush, the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, by which all of the other manifestations of the Godhead are expanded from. And therefore, he is to be worshipped as the Supreme Person of Godhead. Here, there is an, a, a discussion to establish the position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we also understand from scriptures Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Mahi Anya. The Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a combination of Srimati Radharani and Krishna in one manifestation. He is the most magnanimous in the Mo Mahavadanaya, Krishna Prema Padaya Te Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namani Golda Triste Namaha. He is the most magnanimous and the most merciful manifestation of Krishna who has appeared in this particular age to, to enunciate the means by to worship him in this age through the process of Sri Harinam Sankirtan. Krishna Varnam Tvasa Krishna Sangupanga Saparshadam Yajai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi this is mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 11th canto with both the means and the personality to be worshipped is mentioned in this particular verse, which is Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Yuga Avatar and he is none different than Krishna and he has established the worship of himself through the worship, through the chanting of his own holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So in this age, um, Krishna has come as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So therefore, when we understand from scripture that all of the manifestations or incarnations are plenary portions or portions, of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself. And then we also understand that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. Then as this verse is described here, then none of the, none of the statements made by all of the great souls, whether he is Narayan, whether he is um, Vamana Dev, whether he is uh, Shirodasya Vishnu, all of these are exactly correct because everything is included in Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself. But he's unique in his presentation as Krishna in terms of his personality as that he is, doesn't come as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he's called Chana Avatar. Chana means hidden. And he's also called Tri Yuga. It means he, the Lord, appears in three of the four ages as the Supreme Lord. But in the fourth age, he appears as a devotee of himself. Therefore, he is called Chana, or hidden, but he is Krishna himself in the role of his own pure devotee to teach pure devotional service from the position of a pure devotee. The Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quite unique and uh, very difficult to understand because he is both God and a devotee at the same time. And uh, therefore, you'll see there are many, many of his associates when he was here, worship him, uh, wanted to worship him as the Supreme Lord, but he wouldn't allow that because who was teaching from the position of a devotee that anyone who says that they are the Supreme Lord is actually uh, false, in other words, bogus. Because at that time, many people were worshiping or claiming to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
And therefore, Lord Chaitanya, although he was a Supreme Personality of Godhead, would not acknowledge his position in a public way in order to prevent this type of um, pretentiousness or cheating that was going on in the name of personalities who wanted to be worshipped as the Supreme Lord, although they were only ordinary conditioned souls. So Mahaprabhu's mission is quite interesting and it's quite diverse, but we understand that he is God himself and he is non different than Krishna. And he manifested himself to Sri Ramananda Roy. And he met Ramananda Roy in Kavor after he was, he was suggested by Sarvabhamba Bhattacharya to go meet this very great personality who, although he was a governor, still he was a great personality. And so after meeting and discussing and becoming very much connected with each other, the Lord revealed to him his form as Radha and Krishna. And you'll see that beautiful painting was also given for us through the arts, the artists in our Krishna consciousness movement. Krishna with Mahaprabhu is there and he's expanded into Krishna on one side and Radha on the other side. Therefore, it's a very um, amazing manifestation of the Supreme Lord. And of course, in this age, because he is Krishna, and because he is the mood of Krishna in Vrindavan, he's also opened up the realm of Vrindavan for the, for the practicing devotees to attain, provided they purify themselves in, in through the process of Sri Harinam Sankirtan and pure devotional service. So uh, what is being said here is quite, uh, uh, correct that although he may be referred to in different manifestations of himself, he is still the same one, Krishna. Uh, and sometimes people say, well, he is this and he is that, and they argue. But all of their arguments are correct because he is the manifestation of all the incarnations of the Lord in one. One personality, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he showed that also. He expanded himself also in all of the manifestations of Krishna also. And he also showed his universal form to um, Sri Advaita Acharya upon request. So, um, and this is very um, essential to understand because many people who come to spiritual life, even to our society, coming from the Indian culture, do not understand Mahaprabhu. It's very hard for them to understand and even to accept Mahaprabhu as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead because he's always been in the role of a, of a, a covered incarnation of the Lord. And therefore, he is seen. Uh, throughout the Indian subcontinent, in most areas except outside of Bengal, of course, as being just a very powerful personality who had who came to enact Harinam Sankirtan. He's not seen as a supreme person. And therefore, even today, there are devotees in our movement who are either uncertain or still. Uh, not accepting Mahaprabhu as being the Supreme Personality of God and Sri Krishna in Sh of, of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Because of, because, of, because of being conditioned to understand it in a different, him in a different way. Well, we worship Mahaprabhu. In fact, Prabodhananda uh, Saraswati not only worships Mahaprabhu, but he worships Mahaprabhu exclusively aside from all of the manifestations of the Godhead. He only wants to know Mahaprabhu, and that's all. <laughs> he is so fixed on Shaitanya Mahaprabhu that even if you suggest other forms of worshiping, who is Krishna himself, he will immediately reject such things and again gravitate directly to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, because he is a jhana, a hidden because we don't find many statements about him as being the Supreme Lord in the Bhagavatam, 
there are two or three, there's one in the sixth canto and the eleventh canto of this position. Um, in other scriptures and other Puranas, such as the Linga Purana and the, and the Markandeya Purana, and many of the other prominent Puranas, Padma Purana, and others, he's mentioned indirectly as the son of Sachi, who has come as the Supreme Personality of Padma. His color is also given, his mission is given. His appearance is also given all of these are uh, mentioned in many, many other Puranas. And uh, with a little bit of uh, with a little bit of research and, and investigation, you can find many statements glorifying Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the Supreme Personality of God. And we should worship him in that way. Sometimes people say we should because he he has come as a devotee. We don't want to disturb his mood of worship as a devotee. Therefore, we should worship him as a devotee. But you see, uh, this is a discussion that goes on, even amongst great souls, that we find it in our Krishna conscious movement. She has all kind of established deity worship. And then he installed the deities of Gorna Church. And uh, for regular worship. And so he is on the altar and dressed opulently like the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Oh, and he also is included with a peacock feather for the sake of clarification that he is Krishna himself. The devotees worship him in that mood like that. Um, and there is also uh, yeah, there's always been some controversy centered around that worship. But and then of course Mahaprabhu also appears in other manifestations of worship of obedis to his worship along with Gadahar, but even Otakor has established the ends in yoga fit. And Sri Mayapur, Gaur Gadadhar deities, which is Lord Chaitanya and Gadadhar in, uh, in, on the altar, which is actually Madhurya Ramesh. When he's with um, when, when he's with Lord Chaitanya, uh, Lord Nityananda, he's in Sakyaras, Gaur Nityananda, for gender Nandana Ye, Sachi Sutta, Hoylo Se Balaram, Hoylo Nitai. And that uh, Balaram has come again as Nitai and Rajendra Nandana Krishna has come again as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that is a statement by Srila Bhakti Vinoda Kaur in his song. I, I believe, I think it's maybe Narada and Dasta Kaur in his song. And, uh, but he is also understood as in, in the mood of Madhurya Ras with standing with Gadadhar who is an expansion or a manifestation of Srimati Radharani, who has appeared to assist Krishna in his pastimes of Tadinam Sankrita in the mood of Adorya Ras. And there is many, many intimate, and there is many, many discussions of how the devotees of the Lord worship the Lord in different forms of the Lord, because he is also Krishna, Therefore, he can be worshipped in, in different rasas. He's also worshipped in parental affection, in Sakya Ras, in Dasya Ras, in Madhurya Ras, by different devotees, such as uh, we understand uh, uh, Jagadananda Pandit worship Lord Chaitanya in the mood of Madhurya Ras. And of course, uh, um, Others worshipped him in the mood of friendship. There's, of course, he had his mother and his father, and the elders. They will. They also worshipped him in the mood of Vatsaya Ras. So, as a supreme personality of God, he is Rasa Vaisa. He is the source of all Rasas. Also, so this um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is such a diverse manifestation of Krishna in the form of an incarnation. But we understand 
ultimately he is the supreme personality of Godhead Sri Krishna himself in the mood of his own devotee who came to spread the Yuga Dharma, the means for self-realization in this age, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, congregational glorification of the Lord in the form of Harinam Sekhi. So um, this Chaitanya Charitamrita is really deep in philosophical and in tattva. As you go on with Chaitanya Charitamrita, you'll see the different moods that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu exhibits in his different leelas with his different devotees. And it's quite diverse and um, quite hard to understand, especially when you get to the later areas in the Ancha Leela, where he goes into the ecstasy of Radharani's love for himself in, in Jagannath Puri. So um, study the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and automatically you'll develop pure devotional service. His, uh, his life is so, uh, so sweet. He is also known as uh, Namo Maho Mano Vandanaya. He is most magnanimous. He is so kind, so available, and so forgiving that um, he allows worship even by the lowest. And we have the example of Jagai and Magai who are sinful personality, but got the, got the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead to be worshiped in this for this particular age. So we recommend devotees to read Chaitanya Charitamrita, study Chaitanya Charitamrita, and make Chaitanya Charitamrita and Srimad Bhagavatam the essence of your, the knowledge that you that you would obtain in order to practice pure devotion. And Chaitanya Charitamrita is so sweet with many, many, many leaders. Okay, thank you. All right, Krishna. Thank you so much, Marjo. Such a wonderful class and a really sweet class on, on uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Would like to ask devotees, um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to request devotees if you could please um, uh, show your video. I think that's the right word to use. I don't know. Um, so that we can have darshan of, the, of uh, Maharaj and also Maharaj can see us. So please, if you can, please do turn on your videos. And would like to ask devotees, if you have any questions, any, any clarification, please do unmute yourself and please raise your hand so that I can you know, call everybody in the order that you have raised your hand. Um, Marge, let me see, did I miss somebody? Any? Okay, Marge, I have a question and it's on, on about uh, Lord Chaitanya. I'm so glad that you addressed this point, but I would like to ask a little further question. Is we were taught, Maharaj, that when, you know, those, those of us, when we come to NISCON, when we take initiation, in order to get to Lord, to understand or get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, we go through the spiritual master. And then from the spiritual, you know, from the guru, we go to Lord Chaitanya. And 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 you also mentioned in your class that especially from the south or from India, it's, it's very hard for devotees from Indian origin to really understand the glories of Lord Chaitanya. But when we are told that you know to get to it's not easy to get to Radha Krishna, we have to go through Lord Chaitanya. So how can we really help? the certain group of devotees, Maharaj, to really understand the glories of Lord Chaitanya and we just can skip, you know, like how, how can we really promote that lack of a better word, Maharaj? Well, education, that's why we have these books. We should be giving classes and discussing Lord Chaitanya, his position and our relationship with him, his uniqueness, his appearance in once in every yuga cycle, uh, once in every thousand yuga cycles and his mercy upon the conditioned souls in this age. We have to, uh, the books are there, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Bhagavat, uh, Chaitanya Mangala, all of these authorized scriptures by given by great personalities, carefully explain both the leelas and the tattva of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
Mahajano Yena Katasapanta. We have to follow in the footsteps of the great souls. Otherwise, if we don't hear from them and learn from them, we will we will uh, come up with our own materialistic understandings. Yeah, it's education. Mm -hmm. And Marge, is it, um, sometimes I, I go through this um, situation, I think is the right word to use, um, that, you know, whenever uh, new devotees or new people or comers, when they start getting into Krishna consciousness and they have a desire, um, it, would it be appropriate to actually introduce them first to Lord Chaitanya before going into uh, Radha Krishna deities and you know and and that high you know up into that level or is that okay because what I have come across my and this is completely my personal um, um, uh, experience Marge is when that when they skip Lord Chaitanya and go straight to Radha Krishna they kind of minimize I've seen that 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 that's this minimization of Lord Chaitanya, like you said, like, ah, you know, he's one of the gurus kind of a thing, you know. So how can we, is that right, Maharaj? And it's not, how can you rectify it? Well, in this age, it's mentioned that one cannot approach Radha and Krishna except through the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Not possible. So therefore, one, therefore, the guru, the spiritual master is a representative of Lord Nityananda. And he is teaching the process of pure devotional service through the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And therefore, we should hear carefully from our spiritual master and understand the position of Radha and Krishna in relationship to, to um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has established the process by which we can approach Radha and Krishna. So how can we cannot simply jump over? It's not possible. Uh, one cannot enter into the realm of Vrindavan Dham without, uh, without the mercy of Mahaprabhu. It's not possible. That's it's been made. Uh, it's been made as an authorized process in this age. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marsh Bush, for shedding light and actually confirming thank you that that really um helps me thank you so much um devotees have any questions i don't want to take up you know my questions i know i've ran through two and i don't want to take control of it so please do ask your question uh raise your hand or and unmute i'm going down the list to see if there's any questions that has, or it can even be questions that is not related to the class that it just pop in our head. And actually, you know, Marge, I have a question and, and I don't mind if, if you don't mind me asking this, Marge. Um, I was, um, uh, this Thursday, sorry, this Saturday's Gita Jayanti in the US. And I thought I'll ask you first before I um, go reaching out to answers. And I was uh, told that because this Saturday is uh, Moksha Daikadashi, but it's but we should be fasting on Dwadashi instead of Ikadashi, Maharaj. Do you know something about that? Fasting on the Dwadashi, which is the following day. Yeah, instead of Moksha Daikadashi, is it because it's the zonal time zone? Or is it, I'm, I'm just trying to get a clarification because I was going to ask someone well, else about this. This is one of the many, not many, one of the few times throughout the year that the Ecodicy is observed on the following day because it's not suitable to practice Ecodicy on that particular day. Now, these ideas have come up with by devotees who have been doing uh, more intricate and detailed studies of the whole process. When Srila Prabhupada was here, he didn't get into all of this. <laughs> so this is something that's come recently that the devotees have um, studied deeper some of the intricacies of the time realms 
and how it works in different places around the world. Um, so go along with that. I mean, it's, it says if it says it in your calendar, I think it, it mentions it in your calendar, right? Yes, March. It says Moksha Ekadashi, fast from grains, December 3rd. <laughs> So yeah. I'll just go by what Prophet says to make my life simple. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, so just follow okay. what it says, that's all. Okay, thank you, Mars. Thank you for um, clarifying that. Yes, Jai Sri Mataji, please go ahead. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to a lotus feet, Maharaj. Um, please accept my humble obeisances to all the devotees that are here. Thank you for letting me join. Maharaj, I have a question which is not related to this class, but it's something I read Srimad Bhagavad in, in the morning and I've been reading about Kapil Muni and um, the, the fact that the Lord takes birth in, in you know, in Devahuti's womb, so he, you know, he, he takes birth. And then this morning is about another one of the um, daughters of Manu where the Lord has taken birth in her, with her and her husband. How do how do we look at that? Because we don't, you know, we do, we never really hear about Lord taking appearing like that. You know, we we just we think about Kapil Muni, but we don't we don't regard him as the Lord or a you know a, or an appearance of Krishna. How how should we look at that? How do we see Kapila Muni? He is the Supreme Lord. Yeah, that's mentioned. Well, you have to take it from the Shastras itself. Sukti Sukti Purana Diva Pancha Rakshuti Vidhi Nidam. One has to accept the, the directions of the Shastras in order to understand how to worship the Supreme Personality of that and who he is. Now, in this case, uh, Kapila appears from the womb of Devahuti. And, um, this was a divine birth. Of course, he's not coming like, like we do in the material world, but he appears. Therefore, sometimes we say he takes first. We also say Krishna mm. takes first from, from Mother Yasoda and Nanda Maharaj. But still, his, his appearance is divyam. It's divine. Yeah. One who sees Krishna in that way actually sees. So he came to teach Sankhya Yoga, uh, which is a, a form, of, an element of Bhakti Yoga, which includes many of the principles of pure devotional service. So why do we not regard him the same as we regard, say, um, Lord Ram or Lord Nishimadeva? Because they're also um, appearances of the Lord. Uh, we, well, I don't know what that means. We don't regard him. We do. Um, there's a third canto. There's many, many chapters of the instructions given by Kapila Muni to his mm. mother. Um, and, and a lot of that is pure devotional service as far as the information that's being given there. But he taught, he, he, Sankhya Yoga really means to understand that the different elements and how many elements there actually are, and then beyond all of the material elements, there's the Supreme Personality of God had manifested as the Super Soul, who is distinct from all material elements. So he also came to clarify the process of Sankhya, because there are so many different um, authorities on Sankhya Yoga. In fact, there's even another person called Kapila Muni, who was an atheist Kapila. Mm. And uh, and, but Krishna in the 11th canto speaks about Sankhya Yoga in detail. And he explains that there are 28 elements where some, some authorities say 26, some say 25, some say 24, some say 18, some say 16. Uh, and, but Krishna ultimately says they're all correct according to how they calculate the elements. It's a certain form of calculation. So some group the elements and into more than one, and others uh, see them as single entities. So Krishna gives them each an authority of correctness, but ultimately he says there are 28 elements. And he's also come to destroy this, this, this bogus guy called um, 
Kapila Muni, who is more popular in the secular world as, as the Sankhi yoga teacher. He's an atheist. And he also adopted the same name. <laughs> like that. Confusing. <laughs> <laughs> The two names, it's a bit the same names, it's very confusing. Thank you, Manesh. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for that question, Mataji. We learned something too. Thank you. Any questions from devotees, please uh, do raise your hand or and um, I and I will call upon you. Did I miss? And if if devotees, if you're able to um, uh, uh, show your video, please do so please 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 do so that is always a request from um, maharaj when he gives class so that he can see all of us please try to do your best any questions from devotees please um do ask like again it, it doesn't have to be from this topic it can be anything that came to our minds while we read you know it can be anything uh do not feel shy <laughs> do not feel shy this is the time to ask let me see if I'm missing. Yes, Rashi Mataji, please go ahead. Hi, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, everybody. Um, Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, um, I'm sorry, I dialed in late and you were just answering um, a question about how the Guru is a representative of Lord Nityananda. And I wanted to ask, I feel like I've heard somewhere that in rare cases, sometimes the guru is a direct representative of Srimati Radharani. Did I? Is that correct? Yeah. If you go go to uh, go to Chaitanya Charita Mrita. Um, yes, Maharaj. Um, uh, Adi Lila, chapter one, verse number twenty, uh, verse number forty-six. One forty-six. Adi Lila one. 40 not 146 46 36 march you said 46 chapter, 46 chapter, chapter one one verse 46 right well verse 46 not 146 46 okay i think i found it uh let me share this uh, okay, I'm, I'm doing this Radhabhakti for complete authority on this question because it's important. Is, is this it, Maharaj? Yeah, go down to the purport. Purport, okay. Go down to the very end of the purport. The very end of the purport, yes, Maharaj. There we go. Keep going. Keep going. The spiritual master viewed it always considered either one of the confidential associates of Sri Mati Radi Radi or a manifested representation of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. And this is uh, this is declared by the Acharya. So he's coming from either one of the tattvas. You have to understand that the two main tattvas are Sakyalas and Madhuryalas, which were in Lord Chaitanya's teaching. His followers come from either one of the two categories. Most of them are from the Durya ones. But because of his association with Lord Nityananda, Nityananda is a boat follower, and therefore all, his, all of his followers are in the mood of Sakyaras. So the guru, the authorized spiritual master of pure devotee, is coming from one of the tattvas, either from Srimati Radharani, or a representative of Lord Nityananda Prabhu. Thank you, Gurmaj. And it always amazes me how you always know off the top of your head what verse and what part of the purport. It's really wonderful. Thank you. Radha Bhakti, I have to second that. I <laughs> always tell my husband, Maharaj is a walking encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, always steeped in Shastra. I'm just sitting down now, I'm not walking. <laughs> Sorry, Maharaj. But you just know the verse and the book and the line, even the paragraph, Maharaj. <laughs> Maharaj, please give us a little bit of mercy, Maharaj. I beg of you, a little, just a drop <laughs> to have, because this crazy mind don't even know the verse. 
Well, I would recommend devotees to read every day, either Chaitanya Charitamrita or Srimad Bhagavatam. You gain so much by that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. And that was a very nice question, Radha Bhakti. Maharaj, if I can piggyback on Radha Bhakti Mataji's question, um, that, you know, um, and I've read that too, and I've also come across situations, and I, and I would like to ask Maharaj if you could ex uh, shed some light if it's right or wrong, healthy or un unhealthy. I've also come across situations where devotees do know that, you know, that the spiritual master is representing either Sri uh, Nitananda Prabhu or Sri Mata Radharani. And I've come across situations where the disciples are so busy trying to figure out what is my guru's mood, you know? And then they try to, uh, quote unquote, uh, I'm sorry. And then, and and then they try to, uh, you know, uh, decipher, lack of a better word, okay, this is my, my guru's mood and he's from here, so I'm going to behave like that. Is uh, that right? <laughs> it's not about imitation, no. You can take up the guru's mood by worshipping the guru according to how he wants to be worshipped. So he gives you instructions and it explains everything, but you can't imitate. Anus Sharan and Anus Karan, one is imitation and the other one is following in the footsteps. So following the footsteps is an authorized process of spiritual development where we worship the great personality in, in, in the mood that they are practicing. In other words, um, whatever mood that they are practicing, we worship them in that way. So it's our worship, not our imitation. We have to follow in the footsteps, not uh, somehow or other come up with some ideas to try to be like him. Not about trying to be like the spiritual master, it's about serving the spiritual master. Excellent. And by doing that, he receives the mercy of the spiritual master, and that qualifies one to be also to come to the level of Roxley, taking the position of a spiritual master also. Thank you, Maharaj. And Maharaj, sometimes there is, to some minds, there is like a fine line between to, uh, following the footsteps of the spiritual master and imitating him um and it's it's like how how do we know Marge, that we are not imitating the spiritual master but taking but following the footsteps because sometimes in some minds it's like but i'm doing what i said but then they try to become like the spiritual master and sometimes it's like a very fine line how can we distinguish the distinguish that Marge? like could you Set some light example. Yeah, we should preach according to our level of understanding. And the, the instructions that we hear from our own spiritual master. And the practical uh, instructions he gives to us in terms of the worship that he expects us to engage in. If we follow carefully the instructions of the spiritual master in terms of worship and a practice, and then everything becomes easy. Sometimes people want to uh, imitate Srila Prabhupada's heaviness, and but it looks quite pretentious. Sometimes we do that, but not as a regular feature, and then it's not actually recommended. Prabhupada also made that point. He said, he said, I can speak like this, but you can uh, Because um, because of his purity, because of his levels of his pure, his levels of realization on the philosophy, it's good to repeat. But we have to repeat in a, what is called in a, in a way that is um, 
not trying to present ourselves as somebody different, but to imitate Prabhupada's way of doing things. You should just be yourself and be Krishna conscious. That's all. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for um, for the answer. Thank you. Any questions yeah. from devotees? Any clarification? Any you know anything coming to your mind that is triggering you to ask a question or I to clarify a doubt? I saw one case where one devotee was imitating his spiritual master and the way his spiritual master would carry on, and he was trying to, you know, speak like him and dance like him and and act like him, and. Um, you know, he was doing it pretty good in terms of the imitation was quite good. But then after some time, he had he had a lot of spiritual trouble. <laughs> I saw that because I was privy to the whole thing. So, yeah, we shouldn't somehow or other be pretentious. It's not about pretense. Trying to present ourselves as being, you know, advanced. <laughs> by imitating the spiritual master. <laughs> and I think, Maris, there was a point by, uh, I, I was listening to, to this from, I think it was uh, a, um, a conversation or something between uh, Sri Prabhupada and one of his disciples. And I don't know if it's to Tamakrita Maharaj or, or someone else, but he was saying that if this person thinks that he knows more than the spiritual master, then it's fall down or something, Prabhupada said, I think. There was like a yeah. comment. Prabhupada said, even if you know more than your spiritual master, you, know, you should not present yourself in that way. He didn't say it's not possible, but he said it, but you should because uh, when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was approached by uh, Prakasananda Saraswati as being a Mayavadi sannyasi, and Prakasananda Saraswati said, "We, well, you know, uh, why don't you, why don't you, uh, you know, speak about, you know, uh, philosophy, Vedanta." And uh, Mahaprabhu, who was Krishna himself, he was giving the example. He said, my spiritual master considered to be, considered my, me to be a fool. And he went into detail about it. And he said, therefore, he told me, just chant Hare Krishna. That's all. You can't understand philosophy. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu demonstrated that he humility of a, of a disciple in relationship to all of these great Mayavadis. Thank you, Maharaj. Amazing. Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Any clarification? Please, uh, you can raise your hand and I, let me see. Did I miss somebody? When the, when these things flicker, I think I'm going to see a hand raise. <laughs> any questions, any thoughts, any clarification? Anything that's coming into your mind? Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. <clears throat> Except on all the basis of God, your God, your power, but thank you very much for the lecture and so much explanation that you gave about the Supreme Personality of God. Um, but I'd like to thank you especially because twice in the lecture you made, I will use the power part word, propaganda <laughs> that, that we have to read Tita <laughs> Chaita yeah, um, so I, as soon as you can say the first time, I said, I'm going to start from the beginning of Chitani Chaita Meet and start reading again. <laughs> that, you gave me that inspiration. I said, okay, well, good propaganda. We're going to start reading <laughs> on the beginning of Chitani Chaita Meet. Yeah, Baba Tam, I'm already doing this uh, book, um, uh, audio book. So that's a lot of fun for me, uh, reading and, and learning at the same time. These two, are, but, these two are the essence of all scriptures. Yeah, I... <laughs> But you see, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and his life is so sweet. 
you can just can swim in that ocean of nectar. Maharaj, I, I have, I've also heard, you know, many times that, uh, and this seemed to be a mental dilemma for me, is we, you know, that Chaitanya Charitamrita is postgraduate level in terms of understanding it. And this rascal mind of mine is not even past graduate, Maharaj. So how can we understand the Chaitanya Charitamrita if it's postgraduate level? Like, is there like a assistant supplemental book that we can understand that the deep nectar well yeah but you have to understand that in context um bhakti siddhanta saraswati makes an interesting statement he says those who read chaitanya charitamriti before they read srimad bhagavatam only them only those can only those can understand srimad bhagavatam Because he said Chaitanya Charitamrita is living Bhagavatam. It's the life of Bhagavat. <laughs> it's living Bhagavatam. Therefore, Prabhupada also showed that by placing prior to his uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam in the very beginning, the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in synopsis form. There in the very beginning of the first canto. 60 plus pages of the life of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So yeah, those, I have those statements. They're, they're actually uh, given by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And Maharaj, um, and I've also, you know, seen that there is Chaitanya Charitamrita and there's Chaitanya Bhagavad. Does it, matter which one we start with or is there a um Chaitanya Charitamrita yeah. okay and yeah. and what is the difference Maharaj I'm trying to understand well interesting question you have um Chaitanya Bhagavat is more Leela whereas Chaitanya Charitamrita is full of tattva there are many 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 verses in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that are from the Srimad Bhagavatam and other scriptures. You don't find that in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Chaitanya Bhagavat is more emphasis on Lord Nityananda than it is on Lord Chaitanya. Because Vrindavan Das Thakur is a disciple of Lord Nityananda. <laughs> and he is the author of Chaitanya Bhagavat. But from the Tattva Leela point of view, Chaitanya Charitamrita gives it a, a little more balance. But Chaitanya Bhagavad is just full of Leela. That's all it is, is Leela. There's many, there's just, there's a few chapters simply on Lord Nityananda alone. But it's all about Lord Chaitanya also. Thank you so much, Marsh, for clarifying that. That was always on my mind, and I never got to answer, ask that. Thank you for clarifying that. And another point is that Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati did a commentary on Chaitanya Bhagavan. But he didn't say, although he mentions Chaitanya Charitamrita, he's, he gave his commentary on Chaitanya Bhagavan. And therefore, Prabhupada didn't touch Chaitanya Bhagavad because he didn't want to try to try to surpass the spiritual master. When when I was just listening, I think it was yesterday, when the Lord said to Prabhupada, "Are you going to do Chaitanya Bhagavad?" Prabhupada just immediately dismissed the question. <laughs> we really get into it. Thank you, Marsh, for clarifying that. Thank you so much. Mind is clear now what to do next. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Any clarification? Any uh, thoughts? Um, and any points? Please uh, do ask your question, clarification, anything. And uh, if, okay, the group seems a little bit quiet, Maharaj. I... And I think I ran out of questions, Marge, although they were genuine questions. I promise you that. 
<laughs> <laughs> they were genuine questions, Maharaj, not to fill the time. <laughs> no, you're but, good. They're all centered around the topic. Nice. I've, I've, I've always had those questions in my mind and sometimes I forget them and then when I then Krishna is always arranging a certain time that I have to wait for so long to ask so I'm glad I was able to ask them this morning I've I had them lingering in my mind and I'm sure I've even asked you know pressured about it to my husband and then I just you know it's still in my head so thank you Marge for um uh clarifying the my questions if there are no questions from devotees Marge would you like to end with one round Maharaj. I don't know how your time is like over there. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, oh, how do you go? Let me secure my beads. And if devotees are in any shape, form or manner able to turn their videos on, please do so so that we can all chant together with Maharaj. Yeah, so. Clean up this mess in the over here too. And light some more in the other room as well. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Nanda Sri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sri Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Krishna Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Hare
Jai Sri Hari Ram Sankirtan Ki Jai 